This presentation is part of the Stress Less series from Susquehanna University's Counseling Center, and this presentation is about identifying and replacing negative thoughts. First, we want to review several unhealthy, unhelpful thinking styles, and there are multiple slides to illustrate various ways that we find ourselves in patterns of thinking that aren't helpful. One of these is emotional reasoning. Um, I think that because I feel a certain way that what I think has got to be true. Um, another is overgeneralizing. So I, this is where we can see a pattern based on just a single event, or we draw very broad, broad conclusions based on very little evidence. Labeling is a big one. We tend to assign labels um, often to ourselves as well as other people. Um, so it might be that we think of other folks as stupid or unkind or so on and so forth, but we often apply those to ourselves. Jumping to conclusions is a great one. Um, this is where we think we know what others are thinking, or we think we can predict the future. So we also refer to those as fortune telling or mind reading. And as we continue to talk through more of these unhelpful thinking patterns, just notice which ones may resonate with you. Another one is a tendency to disqualify the positive, uh, thinking that everything that ever happened to us is bad and forgetting about good things or thinking that everything we've ever accomplished is somehow doesn't exist and only bad things or things we didn't do well are what matter. Another one is all or nothing thinking. Um, something's either all good or it's all bad. Uh, personalization. This is where we take the blame or responsibility for something that wasn't entirely, if at all, our fault. Um, and then conversely, we can do that by blaming other people for something that was our own fault. Shoulds and musts. Uh, using words like should or must or ought those imply a lot of guilt and they tend to make us feel as though we've already failed. And if we apply those to other people, that results in them feeling frustrated. So uh, we want to think in terms of trying to transition those words to could or want. So instead of saying I should study more, we can think, well, maybe I could study more. That's a very different approach. And then just a couple more, um, there's magnification and minimization. So magnification or catastrophizing is making mountains out of molehills, uh, taking small things and making them seem a lot bigger than they are, or doing the opposite, minimizing something when it really is important. And finally, men mental filter. Um, this is where we tend to pay attention only to the evidence of our failures and not seeing our successes. So going into this filter or funnel, our words good, interesting, bad, and the person is filtering all that out and only receiving the message, I am a failure. So those are some unhelpful thinking patterns. Now the question is, what do we do about it? Well, this is where CBT comes in. CBT is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. And this explores the relationship between our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. And so what we learn to do in CBT is to identify, challenge, and replace maladaptive or negative thoughts with adaptive thoughts. And that enables us to reduce our stress and anxiety. And we'll talk about how to do that. First, we wanna differentiate between anxiety versus a real problem. So anxiety and fear tell me that I can't handle a problem. Um, the anxiety and fear are persistent when my fearful thoughts don't match the evidence. And what we do to deal with anxiety and fear is identify challenge and replace those fear thoughts. And that also affects our resulting behavior. Conversely, if we have a real problem, that means anxiety is getting my attention so I can fix that problem. Um, my fearful thoughts in this instance do match the evidence. And so solutions for that involve solving the problem, changing or leaving the situation entirely, 
or just changing my reaction to the problem. So a CBT thought log, this is the basis for how we learn to identify, evaluate, challenge our thoughts, and then replace them if they're maladaptive. So first, um, there are sort of nine components to this. And if you look at various CBT thought logs um, on Google, you'll find uh, a lot of variants, but most of them will contain uh, most of the following nine sections. Looking at the situation, identifying the negative automatic thought, sometimes called the hot thought, um, noticing the emotion that's associated with that thought and the behavior that comes from that thought. And then evaluating what's the evidence for the thought and against the thought. And having gone through that process, being able to come up with an alternative thought, which then generates a new emotion and a new behavior. And we'll talk through a couple of examples. So one example is this. Um, the situation is my computer shut down and I've lost half of my paper, which of course is due tomorrow. My negative automatic thought in this scenario might be, I will never get this done. And my emotion could be despair. My behavior might be something like crying, staring at my computer. Um, but then if I can look at evidence supporting the thought, I could think about, well, gosh, you know, that half that I lost, it took me three hours to write that. But then if I look at evidence against the thought, I can say to myself, well, um, it's such and such a time now. I have class at such and such, and such a time uh, tomorrow, and I have eight hours until it's due. So do the math. Hmm. And therefore, my alternative thought could be, I can write that again. I can write that section again. I have eight hours. It took me three hours to write before. It seems pretty likely I could write that again. And then my new emotion might be one of feeling capable and my new behavior would be to start rewriting, which um, you can see is a far more adaptive response to losing half my paper than sitting in despair for hour after hour. Another example would be, we've got a pandemic going on and I'm having to do all my, my learning and schooling via distance, remote learning. My negative automatic thought might be, I can't do this. I can't do school remotely. My emotions might be that I'm scared, I'm frustrated. Behavior that results uh, that I'm postponing doing my schoolwork. And if I look at evidence supporting the thought, maybe I had an experience in high school where I did an online class and it was really hard for me to get motivated. Okay, that's fair. But what evidence might there be against the thought? Well. I'm smart enough to have gotten into college and learn new things. So then my alternative thought might be, well, hey, I can do this. And furthermore, I can get support from my professors, uh, from the CAS and other resources on campus. This would lead to a new emotion of feeling confident and a new behavior of doing my homework instead of procrastinating all the time. So what we invite you to do now is practice keeping a thought log whenever you feel anxious or upset. And after writing things down for a week or two and filling in all those sections on your thought log, you will learn the skill of identifying, challenging, and replacing maladaptive thoughts. And what's really neat is that with practice, you'll learn to re replace those maladaptive thoughts almost immediately, like the minute that they occur to you. Um, because the idea is to learn to do it on the fly, not just to keep writing it down for the rest of your life. And with even more practice, you'll have mal maladaptive thoughts less frequently. So CBT and keeping a thought log is a way of gaining yourself freedom from negative thoughts.